Where's the bolts? It's Monday, the 8th of January. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. It's time for a 737 MAX update on the missing door plug from Alaska Airlines flight that happened back on the 5th of January. Let's get into it. Thanks to the hard work of Captain Chris Brady over in the UK, we now have a much better understanding of exactly how these plug doors operate in the 737 MAX. If you're a 737 operator, you need to subscribe to the Boeing 737 technical channel and to his website as well as he's just got all the information on all the 737s that have ever been built over all the years. As a result of the Alaska Airlines missing door plug situation, the FAA has issued an emergency airworthiness directive effectively grounding the affected airplanes that have this style of door plug system in place until they are completely inspected. However, upon review of this emergency airworthiness directive, as an A&P mechanic, I can't see exactly what specific actions technicians are supposed to do in order to comply with this airworthiness directive. It just says to check with the manager AIR 520 of the FAA for to, to figure out an approved method to comply with this emergency airworthiness directive. I believe things are unfolding so quickly that they are simply trying to figure out what they need to do in order to properly inspect these aircraft. But I can tell you for a start, the first things operators need to do is check for these four locking bolts that secure the plug door in place from rattling around and possibly coming loose and departing the aircraft. The affected aircraft that both Alaska Airlines and United Airlines are operating is the Boeing 737 MAX-9 that normally comes with one, two, three, four normal emergency exits plus the four emergency overwing exits and this additional optional emergency exit located back here which does not have a door installed at the factory it only has a plug door or a door plug a plug type door plug here's what the door plug looks like uh, outside of the aircraft a standard size emergency exit with a standard size window located inside the door plug and on the inside of the aircraft is just the interior of the aircraft. There's no access to any sort of opening mechanism for this door at all. This door plug, that is. This plug is bolted shut. The 737 MAX fuselage and door plugs are built here at Spirit Aerosystems in Wichita, Kansas. The fuselage and door assembly is then shipped by train to Boeing up in Washington. And from there... The door plugs are removed from the aircraft so that the interior installers can install the interior to the aircraft. The door plug is then reinstalled in the aircraft and the aircraft is then pressurized to one and a half times its normal pressurization on the ground to check for leaks and make sure the installation was done correctly. Again, thanks to the help of Captain Chris Brady of the 737 technical site and YouTube channel, we have a much better understanding of how these plug doors operate and this understanding is going to be crucial for investigators and for those inspecting these doors following this emergency airworthiness directive. This is an example of a 737 MAX 9 in the hangar. This is not the accident aircraft. By the way, they have found the door to the accident aircraft and it's going to go a long way to explaining as to exactly what happened here. Now be advised during this presentation, I'll be referring to this door plug as a door. So don't get all wrapped around the axle with my semantics here. This door is hinged at the bottom. There's two hinges located right down here on the bottom. These hinges, stand by. These hinges mount vertically, slide vertically up into the bottom of the door like this. At the bottom of these hinges is a spring which helps to lift the door slightly to open and close the door. That's these two hinges right down here. This door is held open temporarily by this little cable strap assembly located right here, just used in the hangar. Now inside the frame of the aircraft are these stop pads. There's one, two, three, four, five, six stop pads per side of the door for a total of 12. There's no stop pads on the top or the bottom of the door. Lined up with these stop pads, once the door is closed, 
are these stop fittings, these ears, six ears located on the door itself. So when we get a good look at this door that they've just found, they're going to be, investigators will be looking at these ears to make sure they are in place or not. So once the door is secured closed, the stop fittings, the pressurization inside the aircraft pushes that door out. So that pushes the stop fitting up against the stop pad and prevents the door from moving outward. Thus the plug type door plug. Now, in order to open or close this door, you have to move this door about an inch and a half vertically in order for the stop fittings to clear the stop pad and then close the door and then get the door into position to where the stop fittings and stop pads are aligned. At the bottom of the door is this hinge assembly. This allows the door to open and close in relationship to the fuselage. The hinge guide fitting is part of the door itself. Below the hinge guide fitting is this lift assist spring to help move the door vertically so you can clear the fitting so you can open and close the door. And right here in this hinge guide fitting and through the hinge itself is one of the two bolts on the bottom of the door that prevent the door from opening in flight. These two bolts on the bottom are what prevent the door from moving vertically. And of course this bolt through the hinge and the uh, hinge guide fitting is a bolt with a castellated nut and a cotter key. So it's a drilled bolt. Was it AN-2? I forget. And a nut and cotter key assembly. So it's imperative that not only is the bolt in here, but the castellated nut and cotter key. The cotter key, of course, prevents the nut, the castellated nut, from unwinding because this is not a locking nut by itself. It's the cotter key that locks the nut. Located on the top of the door frame are a pair of pins, this pin here and another pin on the other side, located right over here, that engage this upper door fitting track, which is mounted to the door itself. A closer view of this, the roller frame, again mounted on the door frame itself and the guide track on the door itself. So the door needs to come in and then down to mount onto the roller pin. And then you bolt that assembly together with a locking bolt and these are the two bolts that inspectors are looking for at the top of the door again a drilled bolt with a castellated nut and a cotter key and note this bolt only captures the pin it doesn't go through the pin unlike on the bottom of the door and here's what this looks like inside the aircraft we're looking at the right side of the door from inside the aircraft this right hand side is the door frame and this left hand side is the door itself with the guide track fitting right here. And here's the bolt that inspectors are going to be looking for in these inspections, pinning this pin in place. So in order for this door to open, it looks to me as though this door needs to move. Well, you take the bolts out first and then the door needs to move vertically about an inch and a half before you can release the guide track from the pin and then you can hinge the door outward. And by moving the door vertically an inch and a half that allows the pin to clear the guide track fitting but it also allows the stop fitting on the door to clear the stop pad mounted on the door frame thus allowing the door to open. Now looking at the current evidence of the accident airplane we it appears and if we look at some of the B-roll footage of the NTSB, it appears that all of these stop pads, all 12 of them, appear to be in place and in good condition. And here's the two roller pins uh, that, that secure the door in place. They appear to be in the correct location and in good condition. And here on the exterior of the accident aircraft, again, we can count all six stop pads uh, on the on that side of the door but here are the two hinge assemblies which appear to be in perfect condition with the door having been apparently launched right off of the springs cleanly away from the aircraft so it appears to me that the only way this door could have opened up on them was that either those bolts securing the door from moving vertically were not in place or those cotter keys were not in place and those nuts unwound and the bolts came apart but over time 
Normally, you've got pressurization will hold that door closed, but if you start rattling that door around enough, you've got basically a mousetrap set up. If you don't have any those retaining bolts in there that eventually given enough turbulence and the correct um, pressure differential, remember this happened at 16,000 feet. Let's take a look at that real quick. Remember your pressurization schedule. This is automatically done by the auto controller. There were write-ups with the auto controller. We'll get into all that into another um, update and the crew reaction and the prior maintenance history of this airplane. But right now, remember the pressure differential of the aircraft. As soon as you push the throttles forward as a passenger, you can feel that slight bump in pressurization, a little bump in your ears. 0.1 PSI, the aircraft is automatically positively pressurized just a little bit. And one of the benefits of doing that is to stop these doors from rattling around. And then you continue your climb. The aircraft climbs much quicker than the cabin. You want to keep the cabin rate of climb around 500 feet per minute for passenger comfort while the airplane's climbing out at two or 3,000 feet per minute. But at uh, 14 to 16,000 feet where this door let go, the pressure differential on that door is not as strong as it would be up at cruise altitude where you could have as much as eight PSI times the square footage of that door, pushing that door against the frame. So it's conceivable that if you enter some turbulence or this door has already been ajar from previous hard landings, that mousetrap could have just been barely hanging on the hinges and given the right amount of turbulence and just, a, just not quite enough pressure to really hold that door against the frame, that door could have just popped right up and out and off of the airframe. So where's the bolts? Were they there at all? Were they sheared? Was there any other part of the structure that was compromised? We'll get a lot better picture as soon as the NTSB shows us the pictures, the detailed pictures of the door that they most recently found and go a long way to explaining of why this door came open, but how how this was possibly overlooked throughout the entire process is going to be a big answer for investigators to find out. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. Again, go over to Chris Brady's 737 technical site and YouTube channel and subscribe and support his work as well, especially if you're a 737 operator. He's got all the answers. Thank you so much for your support. See you here. Late breaking update. There appears to be a TikTok video of a drive-by, somebody driving past Bob's yard there where they found the door. And there's a quick look at the door and it looks to be in just about perfect condition. Hmm.